What is up, everybody? Chris, the old ass retro gamer here. I am trying this for the fourth time. <laughs> uh, so I I'll start from the beginning. It's it's a, it's this long convoluted story. So uh, when I went to the Midwest Gaming Classic, I borrowed an, a video camera that filmed in 1080p for my employer in order to film the panel I was on for the uh, Midwest YouTube Gamers. And I figured while I have that camera in my possession, I'll just, you know, I'll try to film a new style of video with it in 1080p. And I'll put all this uh, footage that I captured from all the games that I bought. I, I captured footage from every single game I owned that I could capture footage from. And uh, I filmed this big, long, epic video, started editing it, and I absolutely hated it. The framing was bad. The image was washed out because I never used the camera before. I didn't know how it worked. And I just, I was not digging, and the video would have been probably two hours long edited anyway. So I said, forget it, scrap it. Try to do a live version of it last week, and the camera on my Mac just kept cutting out every single time. So hang on a second, let me get on here. Camera on my Mac just kept cutting out every there single time. There we go. Let see the chat. Um, yeah, I cut out every single time. I think I cut out maybe six times total, and I just gave up about halfway through. And I said, while I had everything out and about to talk about for that live stream, I said, screw it. I'll just film a brand new video right here now after I finished messing around with all that streaming crap. Film the brand new video. And I've come to realize that ever since starting these live pickup videos that I've been doing since December, I really hate editing those pickup videos together when I, when I film them. Uh, so I, I kept putting off editing that thing. I kept on saying I wanted to have it out by tomorrow. And I was like, yeah, it's not going to happen because even today I came home from work and I was just like, I don't feel like editing. So I need to get this out. It's been almost a month since the Midwest Gaming Classic. So I said, let's just do another live stream of it. Now that I know how to get it to work properly on my laptop, let's just try it all over again, get it out of the way so I can move on to the videos I really want to be making. Not that I don't want to talk about these games that I picked up at the convention. It was fantastic. So this is my Midwest Gaming Classic 2019 recap and pickups video. I do one of these every year. Uh, since I started going to the convention, this 2019 was the fifth year I've gone to the Midwest Gaming Classic. Uh, every year, I I have more and more fun. It you know I find more things to do. It's awesome. Make more friends. It's it's great. It's a humongously entertaining convention. It's one of the more entertaining conventions I've ever been to. Uh, and it's only two days, and I cram so much stuff in those two days. It's like mind numbing, uh, in a good way. So. Uh, I'll start with the recap stuff, okay? I got my notes over here because it was almost a month ago, like I said, so I needed to have a little bit of a little bit of a refresher. So let's say uh, the convention runs uh, Saturday and Sunday. There's a preview night on Friday. You have to pay extra money to attend. Uh, you get to go into the vendors hall uh, a little early. If anyone has their stuff set up, you could possibly buy things from them. Uh, you also get uh, early ar early arcade access, the big arcade that they set up. They had redesigned the way the place was set up this year. Uh, they swapped the arcade and the vendors hall completely, which I thought was actually really, really good. What's up, Matt Whedon? How's it going? Welcome to the stream, part four. <laughs> um, so it was laid out a lot easier this year. I mean, it was it was easy to find what you were looking for. The vendors hall was spread out, nice, no crowds. I mean, there was a lot of people in there. Never bumped into people like I did last year. The arcade was nicer, too. There was way more space available, and like I said, no one was fighting over arcade games and stuff like that. It was great. So let us uh, I did go for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Did not have the VIP badge. And then, uh, it's the story behind that. Um, I didn't pay for it. How about that? Uh, so I got to the convention on Friday. I want to say around 4 p.m. Uh, and then it's in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, at the Milwaukee – or no, I'm sorry, the Wisconsin Convention Center in downtown Milwaukee. Got there about four, got to my hotel. The moment I walked in, church, the game grinder sitting there waiting for me in the lobby, which was fantastic. Uh, checked in, uh, church, and uh, Jason from Corpus Club Gaming and his wife all helped me bring all my bags up to my room, and we immediately headed out to the Make Sense Variety Store. I went there last year upon arrival at the convention on Friday, and no one went with me because uh, everyone was still on their way to the convention, so I went by myself. This year, they all wanted to come with, and the cool thing was I had stuff to sell to the store since it's a resale shop, and so did Church. So we headed over there and sold a whole bunch of crap that I had been trying to sell on eBay for the last couple of months in order to gain money for the convention. And uh, so it was a bunch of limited run games I didn't want anymore and stuff like that. 
And uh, Church had a huge box full of stuff that he sold. He got a ton of money for his stuff. But I got a pretty decent amount. I want to say I got like $80. And I spent it wisely. Yeah, that was crazy. It was just just my Mac. For some reason, it didn't want to cooperate that night. But the thing was, I rebooted it after all those attempts. I rebooted the Mac, and it worked fine after that. So, whatevs. Howdy, can't stick around long. Oh, it's a cool game, uh, Church. Uh, not talking shit about you yet. <laughs> just kidding, dude. Uh, it's cool. I'm going to try to rip through this as fast as I can. So... All the stuff that I got at the uh, Make Sense Variety Store that night. Uh, I'm not a toy collector. I used to be. Not anymore. But there is a specific movie that has connections to video games that I love. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. So if I see things related to it, even if they happen to be toys, I'll buy it. So that's Tron. And I found a uh, Grid Warrior still in the package. This is from the remake, or what do they call it? The reissue of the 1982 action figure line. I had all those toys back in the early 80s. I had every one of them that's pictured here on the back, even the light cycle. I uh, played with them all the time. Tron's head would always pop off because these things are really cheap, but I think NECA used better materials when they remade these. Uh, so, yeah, I found a Grid Warrior. It's fantastic. I love these toys. I think the, the design of them and the way that they're like this clear, not clear, but like translucent colored plastic is really neat. Kind of makes the, uh, the glowing edges on their outfits stand out. Really cool. And even the staff is glow in the dark, which is nice. Um, also picked up... Let's see here. One of my favorite Sega CD games. That's Ground Zero Texas. Complete. Second disc and everything. It's so big it has two discs. Um, it's a full motion video game. Sega CD was notorious for having all of those. This one I think is the most accessible out of all the ones that I've ever played. Because this one isn't like Night Trap. Well, it is kind of like Night Trap and Double Switch. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, this one's more accessible because it doesn't require memorization. Uh, and those other games it's like you have a time code and it's like if you have to get to be at the specific camera to watch a specific event happen in order to win the game and maybe trap some bad guys or whatever here it's like it just tells you oh there's bad guys in this area go and go and defeat them you end up watching like a little cut scene to explain what's going on you have a the game itself when you play it is like a gallery shooting game uh there's like uh, an environment and bad guys will pop up from behind the environment you shoot them you don't use a light gun it would be cool if you could use the light zapper or something like that or whatever it was called for the genesis and uh, no, you have to use the controller. Uh, kill a bunch of aliens in that way, and then another cutscene, move on to the next base. And it's really fun. It's really cheesy and goofy, but I have a lot of fun. This was my favorite game to play back in the day on the Sega CD, at least early uh, early on when I had it. So I was happy to add this back into my collection. Uh, where's the remastered version of this limited run games? So let's get on that. How about that, huh? Also picked up a Saturn game. I own this for the PlayStation 1, but it's Wipeout. Uh, I wanted to get it because it's a Psygnosis game. You know, there's a little... Owl face right there. Um, it's exactly the same game as the PlayStation 1 version. Only thing is some of the effects aren't nearly as good. Uh, Saturn can't really do transparencies very well. So like the shield that you can acquire in the game that goes around your car, it's like this static bubble instead of like a, this translucent bubble. Uh, which It's fine. But the game doesn't look nearly as good. The 3D isn't the Saturn's forte. Um, but it's the same exact game. It plays the same. And the music is just as good as I remember being. And I played this for maybe an hour after when I was capturing the footage and had a ton of fun. Reminded me of how great these games were. I haven't played a Wipeout game in a long time. Mortal Kombat, my favorite franchise of all time. I picked up Mortal Kombat Trilogy on the Nintendo 64. Um, when I was capturing the footage for this, I uh, was not digging it a whole lot. I had this for the PlayStation as well, but I want all the Mortal Kombat things, so I had to have it. Um, it kind of stutters a little bit, and playing it with that Trident controller that I absolutely hate for the N64 does not help. Uh, but it's okay. The, the sound is a down. The sound is downgraded. The video game, I mean the, uh, the video game, the graphics are downgraded also. So yeah, what else? I just realized I didn't plug in my uh, my Yeti mic. Good going, Chris. <laughs> What's up, uh, Linda the Gamer Girl? How's it going? Yes, I am a huge Mortal Kombat fan, as you can already tell. <laughs> um, and the last thing I picked up, I was picking up a Saturn game. Might as well pick this up while I was there. This Saturn six-player adapter. I never see these in the wild. I only see these on eBay, and they go for very high prices. I got this for, I think, $30 at the store. Uh, I think only the only game I know of that uses this is Saturn Bomberman, and I'm not going to sell a kidney in order to play it. So this is kind of useless at the moment. But just in case, you know, I hit the lottery or something, I have a way to play it with friends. So after that was over, we headed back to the hotel. 
And uh, Jason of Corpse Blood Gaming and I uh, had arranged a trade in advance. Uh, I had some stuff that he wanted of mine. I wanted some stuff of his. So we did our trade. And uh, I got Sukadin, Sukodin. I don't know how to say it. I always say Sukadin. Um, awesome RPG by Konami. And uh, it's kind of cool because there's like 100 characters you can uh, bring into your party. You can't use them all at the same time. I think you're limited to four, but you always have like 100 characters to choose from at any point, which is kind of cool. There's also these gigantic battles that take place with like over 100 people. It takes place in the overworld where everyone's really, really tiny, so it's not like this big epic thing like it sounds, but it's it's the thought that counts. It's pretty cool. Uh, but the main reason I wanted this is because... Uh, Hungry Garaya was streaming this on Twitch one night, and I was in the stream. There's a character in this game called Fusulu that you can uh, bring into your party, and the profile picture of him looks like a tiger. Uh, it was just this big tiger's head. So we're all assuming that it's going to be this gigantic tiger that you're playing against or you're playing with in your party. Uh, then she got into a battle with that character in her party, and it turns out it's a dude wearing like a tiger hat, and it just turned into this big epic joke cat jokes being thrown around left and right. The, there was this ongoing joke that, like, like the one that I have with Captain Algebra, whenever I go into one of his streams, I put hashtag Remember Kenna. That's another story in itself. Uh, with her, I keep on, every time I'm in one of her streams, I put hashtag Fusulu is not a real tiger. Uh, it was like, it went on for maybe 20 minutes, and all she was doing was laughing the whole time. So because I had so much fun on that stream because of this game, I wanted to own it. I do own some of the other games uh, in the sequels in the uh, PlayStation 2 uh, so I want to play the rest of the games in the series, even though I know that part two is quite expensive. Uh, he also gave me a copy of Champions of Norath on the PS2. Actually, more of a Street Fighter and King of Fighters guy when it comes to fighting games. Yeah, I, I like those as well. Um, I just, for some reason, Mortal Kombat, just, it's more film-like to me because of the digitized actors and all that. So being a filmmaker, that kind of appealed to me. But it's just a personal choice. Then again, I'm kind of a weeb. <laughs> Going to lurk. I'm cooking. No problem, Linda. No problem. Thank you for being here at all. I mean, I'm, I'm happy that you're here. My favorite video game of all time is Corp Xeno Gears. <laughs> yep. Got that from Jason as well. Um, so he gave me a copy of Champions of Norath. This is a dungeon crawler that takes place in the EverQuest universe. You know, the pre-World of Warcraft. Uh, I had this back in the day. Loved it. Always played it multiplayer with friends. It was fantastic. I love dungeon crawlers and the, the local multiplayer experience that comes with them, even though you can play this online. I never did. Um, thing is, when I got back into collecting, I bought a copy of this from Half Price Books, and I didn't test it when I bought it, so I want to say, like, maybe two years later, a bunch of friends came over, and I was having, like, a, a party, I think it was my birthday party, and we're all going to play a bunch of multiplayer games, and I went to pop this in so we could relive the memories, and it didn't work. The, the disc was just scratched all hell, wouldn't even play. So, this is a replacement. Still fun. I love it. Also gave me a copy of 10, or was it 1080 Degree Avalanche? I thought this was going to be like the SSX games, where it's like all tricks and, you know, when snowboarding with tricks and, you know, crazy physics and stuff like that. No, this one's actually, I mean, there's tricks in it. It's not the focus. It's more racing. So it's just a straight up snowboard racing game. Uh, but the thing that was making me laugh about this is uh, this has a bunch of like early, excuse me, early 2000s music in it, like, uh, what is it, Finger Eleven? I'll just put this right over here. <sighs> okay, so that was what I got from Jason. After that, uh, it was me, uh, Jason, uh, Church, Jason's wife, uh, Josh's, or I'm sorry, uh, Church's um, ex co host of the Game Tenants podcast, uh, Justin. I think he goes by Cardboard Zero online. And one of his friends, I think his name is Chris, we all went out to dinner at this Build Your Own Burger place. It was fantastic. Uh, and then after dinner, we went to the convention to pick up our badges. Last year, we had problems getting badges. At least I did. When I went there, no one wanted to give me a badge. No one knew that I was on a panel. And I was told I was going to get like a presenter badge or whatever it was called that year. Um, so last year, I had a, I stood there for maybe 20 minutes trying to get an answer. Like, am I getting a badge? Am I not getting a badge? I mean, I got paid for this damn thing already. Where is my badge? Just give me a freaking badge. Uh, this year, we all walked up to the table. And before we even got there, the guy that was behind the counter looks at us and goes, I put all your pictures up on the, on the website. Come over here and pick up your VIP badges. And we're like, oh, okay, this is actually kind of awesome. So we're wandering around the convention area. We weren't allowed to go into all well, we weren't supposed to go into the areas that uh, were were for the VIPs because 
uh, we were present. I was expecting for us to get presenter badges this year, so we would be have so we would have access to the room that we're going to have our panel in in advance to set things up, and we wouldn't get questioned by security or whatever. So, but we were told they didn't have presenter badges this year. Turns out they did. I got lied to. Um, so we were given VIP badges instead, but we were not allowed to take uh, advantage of the VIP status. Jason and I kind of did. So we're wandering around, and Jason and I just kind of like snuck into the arcade preview night thing. Wandered around in there. We saw the Halo arcade game. Uh, there was supposed to be like eight of them linked together. They only had one. It was still cool to see it in action. There's a Predator pinball game that had bloody skulls and spines hanging from it. Uh, pretty much every console in, in, you can imagine is hooked up in there to a, to a television. You can play a game on it that they have hooked up. Uh, Jason and I played House of the Dead 2 on the Dreamcast for a little while with the light guns. And uh, we also played House of the Dead 4 on the PlayStation 3, which we did not know even existed on a home console. We're playing it with the move controller gun thing, and we thought it was maybe an add-on or an unlockable from House of the Dead Overkill for the PS3. Turns out it's a download-only game, and both he and I were like, yeah, we got to download that immediately. We played that for maybe 20 minutes. It's so much fun. Uh, wandered around, ch checked out some pinball games and stuff, and then we walked out because uh, Justin wasn't allowed in because he didn't have a badge. So we walked out, went back to the hotel, and... We were talking about playing RetroPie in uh, Church's room that night. We ended up just watching Keen Peel episodes all night, which was fantastic because I love that show. We were just laughing and showing each other videos on our phones and stuff like that, which is just a bunch of dorks acting geeky and silly and whatever. Introduced them to the to the wonders of the Donka Do Balls. Look that up on uh, YouTube if you haven't uh, seen that yet. So uh, that was the end of that night. Next morning, we all met up again, went out to that same Build-A-Burger place because they did breakfast as well and had fantastic breakfast there, and then headed right into the convention to go and start spending some money. <laughs> so um, let's see here. <sighs> okay, so first thing we did is we walk in, and the first table that I walked up to had one of the games that was on my five things I'm looking for at the Midwest Gaming Classic video that I did. So we walk in. First table, I just happened to glance down at these like bins that were at my knees, and one of my games was staring at me right in the face. That was Beetlejuice for the NES. Snapped it up. I think this was thirty bucks CIB. It's the the box is a little beat up, but I don't care. Uh, as long as the game works and it's the box is presentable, I'm fine, and it has a manual. So uh, yeah, now that I've actually played this game, I can say that it is pretty awful. Uh, this is one of the bad LJN games. I do not like the way it controls. You're all jumps all floaty. Feels like you're on ice all the time. Objects in the background that you think are part of the background actually will hurt you. Like there's these torches that you think are just part of a wall, but no, you can't even touch them because it takes you know, you'll take damage. Couldn't figure out what to do for the life of me. It's very vague. So yeah, I'm not a big fan of it. But the music is fantastic. It is by David Wise, who does all these rare games. That's why I wanted this game. It was developed by Rare. Has a very Nightmare on Elm Street. For on the NES graphical style, which I think is nice. Uh, but yeah, David Weiss composes a lot of the music for the Rare games, and it's pretty good in here too, uh, but the game is not all that great. I was kind of disappointed in that, but what did I expect? It's LJN. House of the Dead is one of my favorite light gun series in a big way. It's like Resident Evil, but the arcade and Dummy say, yeah, I love it. It's fantastic. And the second game I bought is when I knew that I was going to be in trouble that weekend. <laughs> I brought a lot of money with me, uh, but I didn't think I was going to spend this kind of money right off the bat. So I buy the Beetlejuice, slide over to look at these, like, cases that the guy who was selling that game had uh, in, on his table where he had all the expensive stuff they didn't want people, you know, handling. And I see this one game in there, and I went, oh, damn it, that, I've been wanting that for so long. I was like, I almost pulled the trigger on it at um, People Play Games, that game store in the city that I used to go to all the time before they closed. They had a copy of it there for about 350 bucks. And I was planning on selling a whole bunch of stuff that I didn't want anymore in order to get a copy of it, but it sold before I could get it. But this guy was selling it for about $100 less. So I said, you know what? Why not? Just pull the trigger. That's what you saved all this money for to begin with. So just get it while you can. Uh, and that is Rondo of Blood, Castlevania X on the uh, what is it, PC Engine CD. This is the Castlevania game for the Turbo Graphics. Uh, only available in Japan, so it, I can't understand what's going on in the story because it's being spoken to me in Japanese and sometimes in German. What is up, Awesome Burf? What's going on? Um, played this on the Castlevania Chronicles PSP game, and I really liked it, which is why I wanted to get the authentic deal. I also had Dracula X 
on the Super Nintendo back in the day. Picked up a copy of that at Blockbuster, and I thought it was okay. Uh, this is the definitive version. This is it right here. It is fantastic. I love the way the story is presented. The graphics are fantastic and well animated. The music, don't get me started. The music is beautiful. I just love it. I mean, the mechanics of it aren't as good as Castlevania 4. You can't really like flick your whip around like you could in that game. But you can jump on and off steps, which helps a lot. Uh, but fantastic game. Absolutely love it. I just wish I knew what was being said to me while I'm playing it. But fantastic game. So slide over to the next table and found something else that was on my list for, you know, the five things I'm looking for at the convention. Uh, one of them was I wanted to find more Dreamcast games that I need to complete my complete Dreamcast set. Uh, only found one game the entire time that I was there that was something that I didn't already own. All I need now are commons. And I'm assuming that all the vendors figured, hey, I'll just bring all the expensive stuff because that's what people are going to be buying while they're there. They're not going to be buying all these lame ass sports games. Uh, so as I'm picking this up, somebody like comes up behind me. He's like, hey, Pico, how's it going? I turn around, and there's Megadan29 staring at me. And uh, I never met him in person before. He's a really good guy. He's funny. Uh, took a picture together, talked about uh, some games real quick, the stuff we were looking for at the con. And then I told him I talked to him that night at the dinner that I had organized. But the Dreamcast game I found was Virtua Striker 2. It's a soccer game by Sega. It's not all that great. Graphics are kind of poopy. They look like uh, Die Hard Arcade for the uh, Sega Saturn. But it's a soccer game, and I'm not a sports fan, so I'm probably not going to play this one all that much. But I needed it to complete the set. Also found Gremlins 2, the new batch, on the Game Boy. This is nothing like the NES version. Uh, that's like a side-scrolling... Or no, that's like a Legend of Zelda top-down adventure action game. This one is a side-scrolling platformer. The weapon situation's kind of weird. Uh, you have like a pencil to start with, and it doesn't go very far past what your character's pixel, you know, hitbox is. So you have to be right on top of the enemies to hit them, and most of the time you're just going to take damage. There's like a lot of power-ups laying around that you can use also. Like there's these boxes you'll jump onto, and these boxing gloves will pop out of the side. So if there's enemies surrounding you, it'll take them out. There's a toolbox you can jump into that makes you invincible. There's a radio you can find that'll give you a little musical note above your head that you can use as a projectile. Um, it's fun. It's really hard. It is fun. I love the music in it. The music is fantastic. Sunsoft knew what the hell was up back in the day. Uh, and I'm not sad that I bought it. I love Gremlins as a franchise. I wish they'd make another movie. But uh, this is pretty cool. If you have not found this in the wild yet, highly recommend picking it up if you can. It's really, really fun. Also picked up Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, Back from the Sewers, uh, the second Game Boy game. I have the first one already, and I absolutely love it, even though people complain about how slow it is and... Uh, how big the characters are, so it slows the whole thing down. This Everyone told me this one was better. I never played this back in the day, and it's the exact same game. It's I mean, it's, it's a different game, but the graphics are the same. The speed is the same. I don't know what people are talking about. I love the first one, so this is just up, right up my alley. I love it. It's a lot of fun. Uh, same mechanics. It's just a side-scrolling beat-em-up. So really enjoyed it. Third one is super expensive. I just found that in a local store, uh, the video games then and now. They have a copy, uh, boxed, uh, or complete, actually, of the third Game Boy game. It's like $250. Nope. <laughs> Let's see here. Yeah, second favorite Castlevania game. That game is fantastic. Um, let's see here. Slide over to another table. Uh, this one was nothing but handheld games. Uh, they had loose cartridges in one section of the table. They had manuals in another. They had games with the boxes but no manuals they had just the boxes and then they had all the complete games and i went straight to the complete section obviously and the only thing that really stood out to me that was of a price i would be willing to pay is the adventures of batman and robin on the game gear uh i thought this was a port of the genesis version turns out i'm wrong uh, I, I was like oh i can play the genesis game and i have to pay you know 200 dollars to get a copy of it uh, and pay you know twenty five or whatever it is I paid for this. Uh, no, it's its own thing and it is poop. Uh, I do not like the controls. I do not like the way the the screen choppily scrolls around when you move. Uh, the fighting is imprecise. I just do not like anything about it. I played it for maybe a half an hour and I was like, I'll probably never play this again. So yeah, there's that. I'm not happy about that. So slide over to this other table. I went to the other side of the room this time. Uh, I was trying to. Everyone was off doing their own thing at this point, so I'm by myself. So I walk over to this other table, and this guy that's running this table just looks up and goes, Hey, Chris, how's it going? 
I'm like, uh, how do I know this guy? So I'm trying to picture it. And the only thing I could come up with was he was from that uh, Nintendo Age table from the year before. Last year, there was this table, tons and tons of games, awesome games uh, that were going for really good prices. All of them, most of them were boxed, you know, complete. He had super expensive stuff. Turns out this one specific member of that forum had passed away. And a bunch of his friends from the forum uh, got together with that guy's wife and offered to sell. They were going to sell his games in order to help pay for that guy's daughter to go to college. Uh, and, you know, I was like, well, if it's for a good cause, yeah, I'll buy as much games as I possibly can. If you have stuff that's worth it. Oh, they had a lot of stuff that was worth it. Uh, I'm assuming that this table was all the leftovers from last year. So I'm picking through it. And another game that was on my five things I'm looking for at the convention list was staring at me right in the face. Streets of Rage 3 on the Genesis. <coughs> uh, third game in the series, obviously. Streets of Rage, fantastic fighting game series. I had this back in the day. I bought it the day it came out because I love this franchise, and I was not a big fan of it back then. Uh, I was just like, wow, it's part two with a couple of little extra bells and whistles. Uh, and I was like, that's it? This is, all I, this is the best you can do? It was like, no big upgrades like the upgrade between part one and two was? No? Okay, I guess not. Uh, so playing it now, I like it a little bit more than I did back then. It's just a fun beat em up. Uh, the only problem with me, or to me, is I hate the music in this game. I love the music from the first two games. Yuzo Koshiro composed the music for all three games in this series. I hope he's composing music for Part 4, the new one that's coming out, which is one of the reasons I wanted this, because I'm really looking forward to Part 4. Um, the music in this game is like somebody farting into a microphone. It is horrible. It is like grating on my ears. It sounds like he just sat at a keyboard and just banged his fist on it and was like, there you go, music. So not happy in that respect, although I do own the soundtrack on vinyl because I'm stupid like that. Uh, but it's a fun game. There's some slight gameplay tweaks from part two to make it better. But, I mean, the characters in this that you play as are kind of stupid. There's like a cyborg old man. It's like a cyborg with a human head and you can unlock a kangaroo. It's No. Uh, but it's okay. It's like my least favorite in the series. And the thing is, as I'm asking that guy to ring me up for the Streets of Rage, he asks me the one question you do not want to ask me at a convention, and that is, do you want to pay with cash or credit? Before I get to that, let me take a look at the chat here. How much is the Batman and Robin, which is an awesome cartoon? Yeah, the Batman and Robin cartoon I absolutely loved. That game, on the other hand, not so much. <laughs> Uh, Streets of Rage 3 is an under... I love it. I mean, it's good. I like it. It's my least favorite in the three. Not to mention my second favorite beat-em-up series. Yeah, I love I love the series. Like, you have no idea how hyped I am for Streets of Rage 4 right now. Can't That can't get here fast enough. So, this guy's like, you want to pay with cash or credit? And I said, what? And he goes, you want to pay with cash or credit? I'm like, oh. I'll pay with credit. And while you're at it, give me that Mega Man 4 and 5. 4 and 5 that you have in the case. <laughs> uh, so yeah I had no intention of picking up any Mega Man games at the convention so yeah this kind of happened this is what this is the dangers of saying that word to me at, a, at this in this kind of an environment so I had Mega Man 4 back in the day it was the last Mega Man game I ever bought because at this point I was like these robot masters are getting really stupid theme wise Pharaoh man who gives a crap that is stupid so after this I stopped buying the games because I was like yeah that, that they're running out of ideas Playing it now, it's not my favorite, although I think this is the first one to use the Mega Buster. So that's cool, but this one, not my favorite. But I had never played Part 5 before. Uh, playing this one, this one is fantastic. I understand why this one is so expensive. This one is really, really good. Uh, yeah, the Robot Masters are kind of dumb again, but I was playing the Gravity Man stage, and that stage is like playing Metal or what is it, Metal Storm on the on the uh, Nintendo. You keep jumping. You there's areas where you're like running around on the ceiling, and you know gravity is completely reversed. And normally you would fall through a, a little hole in the ground to go to the next section of levels. You're falling up through the floor, the, the ceiling. It's really really cool the way it's done, and the music is really catchy. I like it a lot. So not sad that I picked this one up, even though this is I think the most expensive one in the series right now. So yeah, credit card. Hmm. Not my finest hour, but I was not sad about it. Um, so, let's see. At that point, 
uh, I met back up with Jason and Church and a bunch of people that we know from like YouTube and where uh, you know Facebook showed up. Ran, ran into Jeffrey Wittenhagen, who was going to be doing a panel later that day that Church and I were we're going to go see. Excuse me, I got the hiccups all of a sudden. Uh, ran into um, Captain Algebra. Ran into Back in the Day Gamer. Ran into John Aguilera. Uh, ran into uh, Nintendo Hodge and Musty Hobbit and It's Rocket Sauce. And we all were hanging out and talking and whatnot, chit chatting about games, stuff we'd found, stuff we're still looking for. Oh, if you find this game and you and, you know see it, let me know. Take me a text and I'll come and run over. You know that kind of stuff. It was really really cool. Uh, we we're talking to Jeffrey Wittenhagen for a while, and he was talking to uh, Church about the book that he's writing uh, right now. He's kickstarting it for. It's about the Virtual Boy, I think. So. Uh, let's see here. So right after that, shopped around a little bit more, didn't really find anything. So we, Church and I went to go see Jeffrey Wittenhagen's panel about this. It was about collecting for the Nintendo Switch. The real reason I wanted to go, I mean, I like the Switch and all. I love it. I mean, I own it. I have a huge collection of games for it. Um, the real reason I wanted to go is because my buddy Saru Maru, uh, DJ Medina, who created uh, FX Unit Yuki for the Turbo Graphics, he kickstarted. It was a real, real popular uh, Kickstarter. He was going to be on the panel because he's huge about import games, and one of the things they wanted to talk about was the import scene for the Switch because it's pretty huge. So I want to say the panel is about an hour long. Jeff is really enthusiastic about everything. His co-host was really cool. I can't remember the fourth, the name of the fourth guy who was on the panel, but he is like the ultimate Switch collector. Like He goes for every variant of every single game out there. So he probably has five or six copies of the same game just from different regions. Even if there's like a label variant, he buys that. It's crazy. Uh, but it was interesting hearing him, hearing him talk about that kind of stuff. And, and of course, DJ, you know, Saru was talking about, you know, the import scene as well, which is fantastic. I bought a couple of Switch game imports because of him. So that was cool. Met up with uh, Saru after the panel was over, got a picture with him, talked with him for a little while. He is such a cool guy. Uh, so after that, Church and I joined, you know, back up in the vendors hall with everyone else. So I'm wandering around with Jason from Corpse Flood Gaming. Let me catch up with this real quick. Yakuza, I kind of consider the definitive streets of Rage JRPG. I always consider that kind of like a, in the Shenmue universe. It kind of played the same, and the the, the cut scenes were kind of the same way, too. Fantasy Star is awesome. I'm also Mega Man Awesome Sauce, one of my favorite game series. Yup, I'm slowly getting back on the Mega, Mega, Mega Man train. <coughs> my throat is drying out already. Mega Man 2, hell yeah. Yeah, Saru is awesome. That guy, he is so cool. He's going to be part of the uh, new collaboration video I'm working on right now. So... I'm going to pick up with Jason, and he. I told him about the table where I just bought Streets of Rage 3 and those two Mega Man games. I told him there's a whole bunch of cool stuff in there in this case. You need to come take a look. So Jason's looking at stuff, and I find another game, or actually two games in his case that I wanted. Um, first one is Spider-Man for the Genesis. He wanted, I think, 15 bucks for this, but because it was me, and he did, I forgot to mention, he did give me discounts on buying Streets of Rage 3 and those two Mega Man games. They gave me discounts last year, too. If, if this is the same guy, I don't even know if it was. I'm just assuming it. But he gave me discounts just because, I don't know what, I seriously doubt it had anything to do with my VIP badge. Um, but, yeah, playing this one. This one I've always wanted. I love Spider-Man. I love playing as Spider-Man in video games. I've always wanted to play this one. I've only played the Sega CD Spider-Man game. I've never actually played the Genesis one. So I figured it was kind of the same game. It's not. Really hate the controls and the way this the, this gameplay is set up in here. I, like sticking to the walls half works half the time, and most of the time you just fall off. No fault of your own, it's just the controls are poop. Uh, and like there's this weird graphical thing where when I play it on my retro freak, since it's in high def, you can see the outline of Spider-Man is in black as you're playing, but some of the colors of like his body like seep outside the lines. So I don't know if that was meant to be on purpose, look like a misprinting from a comic book or something, but it was really off-putting. Uh, but yeah, not a fan. It's really clunky and hard to control, so I was not happy. Well, ten bucks, who gives a crap, right? Also picked up Robotron, yeah, Robotron 2084 for the Lynx. Uh, I'm clicking for the Lynx. I'm maybe trying to get a complete set. I don't know. Uh, some of them are pretty hard to find. I did find one pretty heavy hitter a while back. Um, but yeah, this is a port of an arcade game, which I absolutely love. The only problem is the Lynx screen is really, really tiny. And the characters on the in the game are really tiny also. Uh, so half the time I couldn't tell if I was shooting bad guys or the good guys or rescuing the good guys or running into the bad guys. So it's kind of hard to tell what's going on. Once I got used to it, I think maybe after 20 minutes, I was like, oh, okay, this is what I need to look for. It, it's okay. It's a decent port. I'd rather just play, like, the greatest hits from Midway discs that I have, like, for the 
uh, Dreamcast or whatever instead. But I'm not sad that I bought it. I think I got this for ten bucks. Um, so I bought those games, and Jason was looking at some stuff, and he saw me staring at one specific thing in this guy's case, and he goes, "What's that?" And I said, "If that's here tomorrow, I'll definitely try to like." bargain with the guy about it. I want to, I'll try to get some money off of it. And he goes, and you know, him being Mr. Enabler, we call each other the super enabler brothers. Uh, he goes, he says it out loud. So loud enough that the guy can hear it. He goes, what's that? You want to buy that game tomorrow? And he goes, Oh, what game are you talking about? And he points to the game in the case and he goes, Oh, you're looking for that, huh? And it was marked for a hundred bucks, which was pretty good for what it is and what it has had done to it. Uh, he goes, Oh, if you want, I'll give it to you for 80. And I went, oh, I fucking hate you, Just or Jason. <laughs> I was like, God damn it. Okay, so <laughs> uh, it is Duke Nukem 3D for the Sega Saturn. Uh, I remember they had a copy of this at People Play Games, that game store I used to go to in Chicago. Uh, they had a copy of this that was about $150, and I was not willing to pay that much for this game. It's a good game. Don't get me wrong. I, I played this when I brought it home to see if it worked, and I ended up playing it for like an hour and a half. Had a ton of fun. I forgot how fun Duke Nukem is, even though I think this one's been slightly censored. Uh, the reason I wanted it is it's been signed by uh, John St. John, the guy who's the voice of Duke Nukem. He was at the convention last year, which is, I'm assuming, where they got this signed, which also kind of makes me think that that guy is from that Nintendo Age table from last year. So, yeah, I was going to barter with him for it. I was going to try to get him down to 90, but for 80, yeah, I bought it. Bet your ass I bought it. That's a really, really good port. I really liked it. Robotron, the OG Terminator game. <laughs> what is up, Musty? Don't worry, dude. I'll still be there for your your uh, final pre-Friday uh, stream on Twitch tonight. Um, so wandering around, Jason kind of like slipped off to look at some import stuff. Ran into this guy who, or went to this table where this guy who was like obsessed with the PlayStation, the PS1, decided to tell me his life story about how it was his first big console he ever got into and all that. And I'm just going to go, can I just buy some games, please? I don't need your life story. Uh, so I picked up a copy of Soul Divide on the PS1. Um, it's a vertically, or sorry, a horizontally scrolling shmup that kind of uses pre-rendered graphics like Donkey Kong Country. You play as these angels. There's a whole bunch of characters you can choose from. Uh, and it's not just shooting. Your actual, your projectiles don't do a whole lot of damage. You can actually, like, fly up to the enemies that are coming at you and beat them to death in the air with, like, a, a staff weapon that your characters all have. It's okay. It's kind of hard to control. It's kind of clunky. Uh, the pre-rendered graphics make everything kind of janky and jerky. I enjoyed it. Uh, thing is, turns out I totally forgot that this is on the Psycho Volume 1 collection that I bought for the Switch, which is the game that Sarumaru recommended that I should buy in one of his videos. So <laughs> I was like, I got a second copy of it. Okay, I'm sure the one on the Switch is the better version. But I'm not sad. I didn't pay much for this. I think I paid 15 uh, the other game I picked up from him was Jackie Chan Stuntmaster. Always wanted this game back in the day. I'm a huge Jackie Chan fan. Uh, J Rumble in the Bronx like rocked my world back then. Like I had never watched martial arts movies back in the day, but like the one-two punch of the original Mortal Kombat movie and Rumble in the Bronx coming out within a year of each other really made me a huge fan of martial arts movies from that point on, and I still love them. Uh, so Jackie Chan was one of my favorites back in the 90s, and I always wanted to play this, never had a chance. Uh, we never bought it at the video store that I worked at, so that's why I never had a chance to play it, because I usually just brought the games home when they would come in and play them for the night to see if they're any good. The graphics are kind of strange. Everything's all blocky. Like, some people had just blocks for hands. Uh, but the fighting, it's like a 3D beat-em-up. It's pretty fun. Uh, Jackie Chan voices himself in the game, which is really cool, and this plot is right out of a Jackie Chan movie. It's like, Grandpa gets kidnapped. A Grandfather! You know, his grandfather gets kidnapped, and he's got to go rescue him and beat up a whole bunch of uh, gangsters. It's really, really fun. I like it a lot. <coughs> grandfather. Uh, so, walk up to a next table and uh, found a copy of Champions Return of Norath, which is the sequel to the uh, Champions of Norath game that I got from Jason. So, why not get part two while I'm there? Uh, I did not play this back in the day. I think I bought it. But at the time that I bought it, the multiplayer games that we were all playing was Halo and Time Splitters and stuff like that. Like first person shooters took over with my friends. So never really got a chance to play this a whole lot back in the day. Uh, and I regretted it. So when I was capturing footage for this, for the video that I was going to make about this topic, it has the option to port over the character that you created for the first game into this. 
Yes. So now I am really compelled to go and play through that game again so I can play through this one as my same character. But another dungeon crawler, fantastic. I played it maybe 20 minutes while I was capturing footage and really enjoyed it. So I love dungeon crawlers. But it struck again. The same problem I had with that uh, Streets of Rage 3. As I'm buying it, the lady that's at the counter says, do you want to pay with cash or credit? And my eyes rolled back into my head, and I said, God damn it. Yeah, I'll pay with credit and give me that copy of Herc's Adventure while you're at it. <laughs> so, uh, another Saturn game. I, I just bought so many freaking Saturn games at this convention this year. I did not plan on that at all. It just kind of happened. Um, it's a Legend of Zelda style adventure game, but it's really, really funny. Uh, all the art is hand drawn and it's like a cartoon. It's like a living cartoon and it's by LucasArts. So the art remi reminds me a little bit of uh, like a 2d version of full throttle, which is really, really cool. I really enjoyed it when I was playing it. It's funny, uh, Greek themed. When you want to regain your health, you have to eat a gyro. Uh, but the reason I wanted to get this, why I was always on my list of things I wanted to pick up sometime. Because this is available for the PS1 also, but I hear the Saturn version is the better. Um, John Tron talked about it in a video that he made way back, like years ago. And he really turned me on to the game. So I've always been looking for a copy of it. First time I've actually seen it in person. So, yay! So I met back up with Jason. He had bought some stuff. Uh, came across this table that had a bunch of boxed NES games. And the one that I picked out was Terminator 2 Judgment Day for the NES. Um, another LJN joint. Um, I've always wanted it. Never played this one back in the day, even though I do. I did play the Super Nintendo slash Genesis version. That is terrible. Uh, didn't expect that much from this version, but this is actually not too bad. I mean, it's bad. It's it's kind of badly designed, but it's not like like I want to just throw it out the window. Bad like the Super Nintendo one that I have is. Yeah, the bad guys are really overpowered and they gang up on you. But it's not too bad. It's just a beat 'em up. It's a generic beat 'em up. There's some racing areas. There's like the ravine scene with the uh, truck while you're on the motorcycle. That's kind of fun, I guess. But the music's really cool, and the graphics are nice. So I really can't complain. I mean, it's playable. But I love the Terminator license, so I had to have it. And uh, let's see here. So this next section, these two games here. Whew, god damn. So after that... Jason and I decided to go check out the arcade. I was like, I don't need to spend any more money for a while. Let's just go do something else. So we went to the arcade to hopefully play some games. Totally forgot that Ernie Hudson was going to be there that weekend, uh, signing autographs and taking pictures. So we walk into the arcade, and we see this huge line, and Jason goes, oh, it's Ernie Hudson, Ernie Hudson. We gotta, I got to get my autographs because he's a huge uh, Ghostbusters fan. So he goes into his backpack and pulls out like these three things that he wants to get signed, and we get in line. And I was like... I didn't care, really, because I'm not that big of a Ghostbusters fan. I didn't really need to get his autograph, but I figured I'll be a good friend, and I'll just keep him company while he's in line. It took an hour to get to Ernie Hudson, so, you know, that was cool. We just ended up talking, chatting with people in line with us and all that. Turns out a guy that was behind me in line uh, says that the Shadow Run for the Genesis that I bought last year, I basically bought it, like, a minute before he came to buy it, so I stole it out from under him, which is kind of funny. He actually commented on that uh, picture that I put on Instagram last year, which is kind of cool. So we get up to the front of the line. There's a guy dressed like a ghost person that says, one autograph per person. And J, you know, Josh, or sorry, J, too many J names this year. Woo! Jason had three things. So I said, give me one. I'll get one signed. And uh, he gave another thing to a woman behind us in line who wasn't getting anything signed. Her husband was, but she wasn't. <coughs> thing was, we were expecting to pay for them. Jason goes, like, why Why only one autograph? If I'm paying money for the, for the autograph, shouldn't I be able to get as many as I want? Turns out, that the Midwest Gaming Classic was paying for the autographs and the pictures. He was just going to be signing, but since he didn't want to be there all day long, signing like 500 things for everybody, you know, one autograph per person since it's free. So I said, oh, it's free? I'll just get a picture with him just because. So I got Jason's copy of the uh, Ghostbusters 360 game signed. Got a picture with Ernie Hudson. He was really nice. He was so nice. And then the guy that was taking the picture saw that Jason and I were in line together and goes, hey, do you guys want to get like a picture together with Ernie? And we did that. It was fantastic. Fun. That was really cool. I was not mad that I did that. Check out, dude, Saturn is such an underrated beast of a console. So many great games in that system, like Panzer Dragoon. Yeah, Panzer Dragoon, I have. Uh, don't get me started on that. Uh, Panzer Dragoon Saga. What is up, Cabot? Giant clamshell. Majestic like. <laughs> yeah, we're trying this again. It's working. For now. 
<laughs> so after Ernie Hudson, we wandered around the arcade a little bit, saw some more things, uh, but went back into the convention center or the uh, vendors hall. Jason went off and did his own thing. And Musty Hobbit had been streaming some NES games the week previous to the convention. And one of the games he was streaming, I saw it on the shelf, and I said, oh, I've always wanted that game. And it's Jackal for the NES. Uh, so the guy was selling this for, I think, 15 bucks, which is way cheaper than I ever see it on eBay. So I said, yes, I will take that very much. Take it right now, if you don't please. Bag it for me, whatnot. Uh, it's a top-down uh, shooter where you're, like, in a Jeep, and you're rescuing uh, POWs and all that. Only problem is your main gun, which is a machine gun, your main weapon is a machine gun, it only shoots straight up. And you can never shoot in any other direction but straight up. But you have, like, grenades that you can throw in eight directions, and you can upgrade those to missiles, and then as you upgrade them, the explosion will actually, like, spread out into different directions. And when you have it fully powered up, it'll go in four different directions. It gives you this huge, uh, like, range. So even though you only got that one pea shooter gun, that thing will destroy stuff in, like, a huge range of, uh, a huge area. Can't talk tonight. My throat is drying out so much. Super fun game, great music. Watching Musty play it, I was having a ton of fun. I was having a ton of fun watching him play it. So I said, "Yes, I must have one of my own." Never played it back in the day. Uh, and he was also playing uh, Blades of Steel for the NES, which is a, an ice hockey game that I've always enjoyed. I played it maybe once or twice. I thought it was really fun. But the game that I always had ice hockey themed back in the day was the original ice hockey for the NES by Nintendo. So they had this in the case for 10 bucks. So I said, yeah, I'll take that too. Uh, no, I should have bought game, Blade. Yeah. My throat is drying out so much. Blades of Steel was up there too. I should have bought the Blades of Steel instead of this. Not as good as I remember. Uh, the really cool thing is you have like four people that you can have on your team at any time, and you have three different player types to choose from, and you can put them on your team in as many different combinations as you want. There's like a thin guy that's fast. There's a fat guy who is powerful, and there's a medium-sized guy who's like good at both. Uh, so you can have like this, you know, combinations, whatever is your play style, you can do that. And uh, that's the reason I remember this game so much is because I had a lot of options. My only problem is I can never tell who has the damn puck or <laughs> who I'm playing as at any time. So it's it's fun in little bursts. It's not the greatest. I should have bought Blades of Steel, like I said. Just making some hamburger helper for dinner. Woo! I had a bacon cheddar cheeseburger that I made. It's actually pretty good. <laughs> um, so hooked up with Musty Hobbit at the end of the it was the end of the night kind of where he's getting kind of close. Uh, we're all talking about getting ready to leave because that night I had organized a dinner at a local restaurant for like YouTubers and Facebook friends to get together and chit chat and have some you know alcohol and some food and whatnot. So I was meeting up with Musty and I was like eh, I don't think I need to be spending any more money today. So Musty goes oh there's this table that's like two tables away. The guys down there are movers. Like, they just want to sell stuff. So go over there. There's something that you like. Just throw a price at them, and they will probably just say yes because they want to get rid of their stuff. I went, oh, okay. They had a lot of really expensive Saturn stuff, and I was like, no, I don't need to be buying any more expensive Saturn stuff. I've already done that. They had one, though, that I've always wanted. Never played it back in the day, and it's called Iron Storm. It's a uh, real-time strategy game. And they wanted, I think, 84 and I was like, would you do 60 And they were like, yeah. So 60 bucks. <laughs> Only thing was, I didn't really take a good look at the back of this. I was like, oh, well, remember this game. I've always wanted this game. I looked at the disc. The disc looks really good. It, it doesn't have any, like, that, that disc rot stuff going on. It looked like it had been never touched. It's, like, pristine. It didn't even look like it had been resurfaced. So I was like, yes, give it to me. Even the hinges are on this. Yes, I want it. I want it. Give it to me. And then I Musty goes, oh, what'd you buy? So I handed it to him, and I was like, oh, I picked this up. And he looks at the back. He's like, why is there a picture of Hitler on the back? <laughs> and I went, what? And I look. And yeah, it's like a real-time strategy game that takes place during World War II, and you can play as the, hit, the, the Nazis. Uh, I thought that you were forced to play as the Nazis at the start, because when I was capturing the footage for this, it automatically gave me the Nazis. Turns out I think it, it randomly picks a side for you to play on, and when I played it the first time, it picked the Nazis. And I was not happy about that. But I was just kind of like, well, I want to capture some footage, so I'll just play it a little while. And it's pretty fun. You know, it's the hexagonal boards, and you move the characters around, and if you land next to another enemy in blank, like a enemy troops or a tank or whatever, you end up having like a little predetermined fight, depending on what kind of if you're like if you're a tank or if you're a plane or if you're just troops on the ground, you know, what your strengths and weaknesses are. It's pretty fun. Uh was not thrilled that I was playing as, you know, Hitler Youth. 
So the cool thing is it says here that uh, a portion of the proceeds from the sale of Iron Storm will be donated to the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum. That's right down the street from where I work in Skokie. <laughs> so I was like, okay, that's cool. Uh, but, yeah, I, I if I play this again, yeah, I'm going to be playing as the Allies. <laughs> so that was the end of the night for the convention. So we headed off to the 42 Ale House dinner uh, for the YouTubers and the Facebook friends and all that. I had I organized it maybe like two weeks before. I would reserved like this area of the restaurant. It was like this corner area where we had our dinner last year. The uh, Cartridge Club had actually had a dinner get together there as well last year. And I wanted that same corner because it was real cozy and you know everyone could talk to each other because you're all kind of like crammed together. <coughs> so I expected maybe 10 people to show up and like 35 did. <laughs> there was so many. There were so many of us. They had like separate us into three different areas because they couldn't cram us all in that one corner that I wanted. But everybody showed up. Like people I didn't expect to show up showed up. So like it was me at the beginning. It was just me, Church, Jason, Jason's wife, um, and then Captain Algebra showed up with Mega Dan. And then back in the day, Gamer showed up. And then Gaming Off the Grid showed up. And then the Game Beaters showed up. And then John Aguilera showed up and Vidya Gamer. <laughs> um, who else was there? Uh, Tesseract Unfolded, uh, Rising Blue Phoenix, Musty Hobbit, It's Rocket Sauce. And they all had people with them too. So, I mean, it wasn't just the YouTubers or the, the Facebook friends. It was like all of the people that they had with them also. Um, and then it turns out the Video Games Monthly people showed up. <laughs> it turns out Captain Algebra had invited them. And they were like, hey, you know, we've got 50,000 followers on our Facebook page. How about we get this big group shot with everybody and you can tag yourselves in it and you'll have 50,000 people looking at you and know who you are. And we're like, yeah. So we took this massive picture that we all had crammed in that corner that I had reserved to take the picture. And it was, it's massive. It was so much fun. The food there is really good at the 42 Ale House. They have arcade games and stuff. Uh, Mega Dan was playing NBA Jam at one point, and I saw him playing it. And Mega Dan's known for no death runs on his channel. He streams them. So I screamed out across the restaurant. I was like, is Mega Dan going to no death run NBA Jam? And everyone got a good laugh out of that. So that was pretty cool. Um, and then I want to say we we stayed there till maybe 9, 30, 10 o'clock, and then we headed back to the hotel. That night we went back to Church's uh, room, and we played Retro Pie all night. And I fell asleep playing... Uh, Turtles in Time with Jason. I was I woke up and I was like running up against the wall and like hitting it as Donatello. And I was like, oh, I think I need to go back to my room and go to bed. <laughs> so that was it for that night. Uh, and the next day, Church and I walked around at first and we found a uh, the, there's always a Nintendo booth. It always is. They have like the pre-order bonuses that you would normally get for the games that they release every year. That they just give away. It's all the excess that they have left over. And they just like throw it on this table and it's they you fend for yourselves to get them. It's posters and and whatnot. They had a bunch of posters that I got last year and the year before. Only thing they have this year that I didn't already have is this Super Smash Brothers for the 3DS and Wii U koozie and these Nintendo Labo. I think they're um dry erase markers. I was like, whatever, they're free. Didn't give a crap. So let's see here. So um, walked in and went back to that table that Musty had pointed out the day before where he said those people just want to move games. Musty was already there talking to the Video Games Monthly people. And uh, I found Aztec Adventure for the Sega Master System. Uh, I never played this before, but I've always been curious about it because the pictures I remember seeing looked fun. Uh, it's like a Legend of Zelda ripoff type of game, but not nearly as good. I'm not a fan. I played it a little bit. Your characters are too big. I do not like the controls. The weapons are lame, and it's just not that fun. And the music is really annoying. Uh, not a fan. I don't think I only paid ten bucks for it, so I was not upset. Uh, also, walked away after buying that. Went and talked to Musty Hobbit and a couple of other people in the, at the Video Games Monthly booth. Came back, and I was standing over there while Musty and its Rocket Sauce were looking around at things. Found another game that I wanted, and that is The Lost Vikings. I had this back in the day for the Super Nintendo. Love it. Absolutely love it. Uh, it's a platformer puzzler. Each of these three characters that you can play as each have like abilities that the others don't. You need to use their abilities to get through these puzzle-like levels. Uh, and the music is fantastic. It's old-school 90s techno, which kind of doesn't fit for the theme, but I think it's kind of funny and kind of goofy. But the graphics are really colorful and nice, and it plays really well. And it's just, I think it's great. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, it was marked for 
what was it, 35? And I asked the guy if I could pay 15, and he said yes. <laughs> so I got it. <laughs> Woo! Um, so I'm wandering around with Jason. No, I was wandering around with Musty, and uh, he was looking at some import games again. And I wandered off, and there was this lady that had a uh, table right there, and I just happened to glance over, and I was like, oh, look, another rare game I've always wanted. So I picked up Battletoads for the Sega Genesis. It's the exact same thing as the Nintendo game. It's the exact same levels, music, everything. Just supposedly upgraded for the Genesis, you know, it's 16-bit. Honestly, I like the graphics in the Nintendo version a hell of a lot more. It's a lot more crisp. It's like, it's like there's so much shading and, like, extra colors to put details on the characters. that They look, like, muddled. They just look like a blob. And I was not a fan of that. I like the way the characters look all crisp and clean on the NES version. Even the music sounds better on the NES version. The uh, the pause music is pretty cool, though, I will admit, the version that they have over here. But it plays exactly the same. The Turbo Tunnel will still kick your ass, even though I'm, I'm one of the only people that doesn't seem to have really any issue with it. Um, but, yeah, I needed it. It's a rare game. Rare. Had to have it. So, yeah. Um, Cardboard Zero, Justin, uh, Church's friend that came with him, he and a couple of other friends of his had gotten a table in the vendor's hall for the weekend to sell games that they didn't want anymore, and it was a lot of really good stuff. Justin was specifically selling his stuff because he wants he wanted some extra money to help pay for his college uh, tuition. So I said, just like with that Nintendo Wage table last year, I'll help him out. He needs help. I will definitely buy some stuff from him today. And yes, he had some great stuff. He had a copy of Pop Full Mail for the Sega CD that he wanted three hundred dollars for. I was like, ah, no. But he did have Secret of Evermore and Secret of Mana for the Super Nintendo. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, never played these before. I have the Secret of Mana remake for the PlayStation Four. I just kind of wanted to play the Super Nintendo version first, so I have a comparison to what the remake is, so I can see what the differences are. Uh, but. Uh, I played Secret of Mana for a little bit just to capture footage, and it was it's, a, it's fun. I like it. I don't I'm not really sure what I think about the whole charging up your attack mechanic when you're fighting because the the, the fighting is kind of like Legend of Zelda, where when you're on the overworld, you just swing a sword, but you have to charge up your weapon in order to get more damage. I'm not sure how I like it, but it's okay. I like it. The music is fantastic. The graphics are so beautiful. But Secret of Evermore was the one that when I was capturing footage, I played it for over an hour, and I was like, I think I need to come back to this game a lot. Same sort of fighting mechanic as Secret of Mana. I don't know if this is actually connected in any way to the Secret of Mana games, but I really like the whole idea. It's like it took place in like modern days, or at least the 90s, uh, in the beginning, and you get transported to this alternate universe thing where your dog turns into like this shape-changing creature and all that kind of stuff. But the graphics are so colorful, and you have like projectile weapons like a rocket launcher and stuff like that. I was having a blast playing this one, so I cannot wait to get into this even more. Did anyone say anything? Megadan actually put on pants for it? Or was he naked? No, Megadan, Megadan was wearing uh, the uh, the track suit. <laughs> I can't remember if he was wearing his uh, Mega Powers shirt or not. Ca uh, Captain Algebra definitely was. I slide over to one of the other guys that's sitting at Cardboard Zero's table, and he had a copy of Gyrus for the Genesis, which is a uh, vertically scrolling shmup that I have always wanted. Even back in the day, I was like, that looks so so much fun, even though I kind of wasn't really into shooters back then, and I would. The thing was, I would like want them, and then I would play them and be like, "Yeah, that's what I expected," and then I wouldn't play it a whole lot anymore. Now I'm really into them. So yeah, I had to pick this up. <coughs> Got it really cheap compared to what I see it for on eBay because I've had one sitting in my wish list on eBay for the longest time. It is absolutely complete. Looks like it was barely ever touched, uh, but. It's kind of like playing our type a little bit. You have an option that you start off with off the bat, but the thing is you can throw it at the enemies and it like ricochets across the screen and takes out everything, kind of like a screen clear maneuver. It looks like you can do it You can do it a lot, but I'm assuming that the stronger the enemies get, the less effect it would have. So had a blast playing this when I was capturing the footage. Uh, walked over to the next table, and because I had just bought Secret of Mana, I found Sword of Mana for the Game Boy Advance at the next table, and I was like, well, if I'm going to get that game in the series, might as well get some more. Uh, so when I was capturing the footage for this, I want to say this is like part four in the series, three or four, uh, because I think Secret of Mana is actually part two, uh, in the Japanese series at least. I was having a blast capturing the footage for this one. This is so much fun, and the story is like, it grabbed me, and it was really, really funny <laughs> because I named... Uh, this female character that you're talking about at the beginning of the game, it gives you the option to rename them. I renamed her Sexay 
So the conversation that people were having in this like jail cell before they had to go and do this arena fight in the game, they're like, you know, so what were you dreaming about sex hey last night? It just it it just sounded really dirty. So I was laughing as much as I was enjoying playing this game, and I really can't wait to play through Secret of Mana so I can play through this one because I was having a blast. And went back to that table that I was talking about where I got the Adventures of Batman and Robin, uh, where they had all the handheld games, um, the different versions. I saw this there the day before, and I was like, I don't know if I want to pay what they're asking for it. So I bartered. I got a copy of Revelations, the Demon Slayer for the Game Boy Color. This is actually a Shin Megami Tensei game. And for some reason, they did not give it that title. I don't know, maybe at that point in time, the the name didn't really mean anything in America. Uh, I don't know if the uh, Persona games had come out yet either. Uh, but it is a standard RPG. It plays like Dragon Warrior a little bit, uh, top down. I enjoyed it. It was really fun. Turns out I found out this is actually available for the Game Gear also. And the original title for this game in Japan is The Last Bible. And you can get The Last Bible for the Game Gear. But uh, I'd rather just have the one that's already translated and not have to buy the Game Gear version and then get a translation patch for it to play on my Retro Freak. But I can just play the whole thing right here. I had, a, I had fun playing this. It's kind of... Like, meh. You know, RPG-wise, it's not nothing special, but I'm assuming that the demon stuff is going to come into it that normally comes into the uh, Shin Megami Tensei games. So I've always wanted that one, so I got that for a decent price. And then it was panel time. Met up with uh, Musty Hobbit, Church the Game Grinder, Jason the Corpse Flood Gaming, uh, did I say Captain Algebra already? <laughs> and uh, Rising Blue Phoenix. And we did our panel, and it went off without a hitch. Uh, I want to say that every year that I've done a panel, this is the third year we, I've, I've been on a panel there, uh, every year the crowd gets bigger. Like the first year, I think we only had maybe five or six people watching it. Two of them were my friends. <laughs> uh, so, and Musty Hobbit and uh, a couple of people from the Midwest Retro Gaming Society Facebook group were there on the audience as well. And Red Rising Blue Phoenix was in the audience. He was one of the people that asked us a question. They asked us about how we grew our channels, which is how we met him. Um, the second year... We had maybe 15 people show up. This year we had like 40, maybe more. And I was like super thrilled. I was like, oh my God, like we made it. <laughs> you know, even though it, it didn't fill the room by any means, but that was way more people than I anticipated <coughs> to listen to like, you know, us talk. But the panel went off without a hitch. We had really rehearsed it in advance. We had done a whole bunch of um, uh, Google Hangout meetings to talk about who was going to talk about which subject and which aspect of the topics and whatnot. So we had prepared pretty well. So it went without a hitch. We blew through it, and we ended right where we were supposed to, which is fantastic. So I was really, really happy about that. Uh, just a little bit. Um, so after the panel's over, uh, met up in the uh, hallway right outside the convention hall, or our convention, or sorry, our panel room, uh, and Tesseract Unfolded was there. PK versus the World showed up to watch the panel. Uh, gaming off the grid, the game beaters got to meet the game beaters, got a picture with them, got a picture with Tesseract Unfolded and uh, PK versus the World. Uh, took a big group photo with everyone on the panel. It was a lot of fun. A lot of people showed up, and a lot of, everyone was like actually like really nice about actually thinking like we knew what the hell we were talking about. We're like, we none of us have like hundreds of thousands of subs. I mean, like I think of the if you combine all of our channels together, we have just over five thousand. But like we've been around, that's the the big draw. Was like we've been I've been around doing this since 2013, so I've been doing it for more than five years, or 2014, sorry. So like we we've seen YouTube evolve, and that was what the panel was kind of about. Like this is what you need to do nowadays to survive. So that was fun. Uh, then it was really starting to snow outside. I don't know what the hell it is with the Midwest Gaming Classic and snowing on Sunday. It didn't look like it was going to be nearly as bad as it was the year before at the beginning of the convention on Sunday morning. But after the panel, it looked like it was starting to get really bad. So I was like, still got all this money left to spend. Let's go. So went back into the vendors hall, and Mortal Kombat people were there again. Uh, the people that played the characters in the original and Mortal Kombat 2. Last year, it was Daniel Pacina, who I kind of had an issue with from back in the day. He redeemed himself completely. Uh, Philip Bon, who played Shang Tsung, was there last year. And John Parrish, who played Jax, was there. And I got John Parrish's autograph and a big picture with the three of them. This year, uh, John Parrish was not there. It was Philip on again. It was Daniel Piscina. But Anthony Marquez was going to be there. He's the guy who played Kung Lao in Mortal Kombat 2. And I have a copy of Mortal Kombat 2 for the Super Nintendo and a poster that I got when I bought my copy of Mortal Kombat 2 that I wanted to get signed by all these Mortal Kombat actors. So I definitely had to go and find Kung Lao. 
uh, go up to his table, and Piscina was there, but Anthony Marquez was not. And I was like, shit, I really need to go to the bathroom right now. And at the convention, not now, not right now. <laughs> so I'm like, crap. So I go to leave the convention, and I'm heading down the escalator. And just as I get to the bottom of the escalator, Anthony Marquez walks by me to go up the escalator with his handler. <coughs> and I'm like, oh, this does not need to happen right now. I'm like, my back teeth are floating. So I'm like, shit. I do a U-turn, go up the escalator, and I basically creep on Anthony Mar Marquez until he gets to his table. So I'm like hovering over there, trying not to look like I'm waiting for him to like get all set up. I'm just like, yeah, I'm just kind of standing here, just looking around. Maybe I'll play on my phone a little bit. <laughs> Did the game beaters actually beat any games? Uh, not that I saw. Uh, but they, they, they know how to watch people play NBA Jam pretty well. <laughs> the game beaters guys are so much fun. Those guys are so cool. If you have not watched that April Fool's joke video that, uh, that they released... Uh, that was the uh, Gold Rings like Sonic music video with Frank the Gamer. That is one of the funniest things I've ever seen. I laughed so hard. I still hum it every once in a while. So once Anthony Marquez got all set up, I walked over with my poster and my copy of Mortal Kombat 2. And I was like, hey, how's it going? That guy laughs like no one's business. He is just a laugh machine. You look at him and he laughs. But he was a lot of fun. He was like really high energy and I really enjoyed it. I wish I got a picture with him, but I didn't. I was just kind of like, yeah, I'd rather spend my money on other things this year. I got games I got to buy. Yeah. So got him to sign my copy of Mortal Kombat 2. Got my signatures from everyone else that I've had signed in you know previous years. Here's his signature right here. He even sung, signed it Kung Lao, Anthony Marquez. Fantastic. Even got him to sign my poster. Like I said, wished I got a, a picture with him. That would have been great. But it was not meant to be. I needed I had games to buy. So went and, went and took my pith and then headed back to the uh, dealer's hall or the vendor's hall and... Yeah, this is when I lost my mind. I'm not proud of it. <laughs> so last year, one of the or there was two things that was on my list of things I was looking for at the convention last year that I never found. I didn't find anything that I was looking for last year. I just ended up buying random things that I came across. But the stuff that I had planned to go there looking for, I never bought any of it. I never. I found a couple of things way too expensive, uh, or things were getting bought out before I could get there. People were texting me going, "Oh, your game that you're looking for is right here," and I get there and it was gone. Uh, so this one guy was selling a copy of. Rolling Thunder 2 and 3 for the Sega Genesis. I was looking for both of these last year. Uh, so, <sighs> these are expensive games. Did not care. I had I, I saved up all that money for a reason. Uh, so, Rolling Thunder 2 I had back in the day. I absolutely loved it. I loved the first game. I have it for the Nintendo, and I played it in the arcade all the time. Uh, this is basically more of the same. It's just different locations, a couple of different weapons, and you get a different character you can play as. You can either play as the character from the first game or a female agent. It's fun. I really like it. But I had never played Part 3 before. And Part 3 is completely different. You play as a whole new character. You have like a weapon select at the beginning of every stage where you get to pick what the major weapon you're going to end up finding in those little weapon rooms are. There's excuse me, there's vehicle levels. There's like a little jet ski level. There's a motorcycle level. It's crazy. It's like Rolling Thunder to the nth degree. And this is my favorite game in the series right now. I played this for so long when I was capturing footage. You have no idea. Fantastic game. So happy I picked it up. But that guy said the magic word, which was, would you like to pay with cash or credit? And I said, mother. Yeah, I'll pay with credit. And give me that copy of Gargoyle's Quest 2. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, gold rings like Sonic. Oh, man. I watched that at least every other day. I laughed so hard watching that video. That song is so catchy. Why a mentally deficient character... Singing about having more views than Pornhub is funny. I don't know, but it is. Uh, so, yeah, Gargoyles Quest 2 had the first game for the Game Boy. I really was trying to find a copy of uh, Demon's Crest. They had a copy of it at the, at, the, at the convention, but it was like 350 bucks, and I was like, nope. But this guy was willing to make a deal on this because it has a Blockbuster sticker on the back. So I got this for, I want to say, $50 less than you would normally get it on eBay. Which isn't much, but, you know, it is a discount, so I'll take it. RPG looks like a standard top-down RPG like you would play in any other game. Although it's really cool seeing characters from the uh, Ghosts and Goblins games mixed in here. Like, the king that you're talking to at the beginning of the game is the main villain from Ghosts or Ghost and Goblins, the guy that you have to kill twice. Which I thought was kind of funny. And there's, like, other characters you run into as you're playing, like, the ghosts and stuff like that. 
Uh, but when you get into a fight, it turns into a side-scrolling platformer, which I think is fantastic. This game is so much fun. I cannot wait to be able to put more time into it. I need to beat the first game first. I've gotten maybe halfway through. I need to finish it. So super thrilled to get this. This is one of the like games I've been looking for since I got back into collecting that I thought I would never be able to own. But I'm super happy that I was able to pick up a copy of it there. But that son of a bitch, <laughs> he said the magic word. <laughs> Well, uh, slid over to the next table. This is the same table where I bought the uh, Dracula X or the uh, Rondo of Blood. Get a copy of Valus 3 for the Turbo Graphics CD. And I have Valus 2 for the Turbo CD, and I'm not a big fan of it. It's very clunky and not fun to play. But I did have Valus 3 for the Genesis, and I really liked it. So I was kind of curious of the differences between the two. So it's, it's actually kind of still fresh in my mind. I played that game a lot back in the day. Pop this in. It's almost the exact same game. It's just better music and cutscenes and stuff like that. It's fantastic. It's a sky side scrolling action platformer beat em up. Uh, a lot of fun. Music is fantastic. The voice acting is so shit tastic. You have no idea. But it's like charming. It's so bad. Really, really fun game. I highly recommend it, just the Genesis game. Uh, at the same time I was buying this, Jason was buying a copy of Ballast 3 for the Genesis, which I thought was kind of funny. Great game. So happy I found a copy of that. Um, let's see here. So, walk. I hadn't really been looking for anything Atari-themed this year. I still wanted to find a copy of Adventure, which is what I was looking for last year. Didn't find it. But I wasn't really looking for Atari stuff. I was like, you know, that stuff's actually pretty easy to come by, at least in my area. Uh, and on eBay, stuff this is going for pretty cheap. But there was a table that had nothing but Atari 2600 stuff, and still in the box, and actually in pretty decent shape. So I got a copy of Sword Quest Earthworld. Had this as a kid. Could never figure it out. Uh, my dad, I think, threw away the, the comic book <coughs> that you needed to actually like play the game. Because as you're like entering these different rooms in the game, the game is vague as hell to begin with. But you enter like certain rooms in the game, and a number will pop up. And it's referencing a panel and a page of the comic book to look at, because there's a hidden message in that panel. And... I can never play the game properly because we didn't have the comic book anymore. So it's it's an adventure game. It's not that fun. It, I mean, even with the comic book, it's just kind of like, what am I doing in this game? And what the hell do these things I'm picking up mean? But I had it as a kid. It's nostalgic. I would like to get Fireworld as well. Earthworld, probably not going to happen. Never had that one. But I had Earthworld and Fireworld, so I had to pick up a copy of that. I also picked up a copy of Pitfall 2 Lost Caverns. Uh, never played this one back in the day, but it's like one of the first Atari 2600 games to actually have music. I think the only other game I know of that had music was Mountain King. And uh, this one actually is kind of like a platformer, like a real platformer. Only problem is I can't play it because I have a Retron 77 and it doesn't let you play this game on it. It's just like, I don't know if it has a special chipset in it or whatnot, but yeah, you can't play it. <coughs> so I was not able to capture footage for it, nor even see if the game worked. <coughs> but that's okay. It's, happy. it's good to have it in the collection. By the way, my phone just died, so I cannot look at the chat anymore. So if you're saying something, I'm sorry. But I'm pretty sure I can log on on my computer here and check out the chat. Let me do that. In the meantime, so at this point, I'm like, okay, I know exactly how much money I have left in my pocket. I need to find something I can buy that is worth just that much money. So I go to this table I've been avoiding because it was always super crowded. This guy had, like, all this stuff laid out on the table really nicely, I will say. But it was just – I don't know why. It was always crowded. So it was, like, I want to say ugh, 2 o'clock, I want to say, on, on Sunday. And the crowd had, had thinned out a little bit. So I finally was like, oh, let me go and take a look at this guy's table, see what he has. And he had a lot of stuff I wanted. Uh, but I'm like, I need to pick and choose because, like I said, I'm not going to go to a cash machine and take out more money. I had plenty more money I could take out, but I was like, you know what? It'd probably be good if you just cut yourself off here. What you have in your pocket is the only thing you're going to be spending. So let me see. I picked out three games, and they ended up adding up to exactly what I had in my pocket, or at least like what I thought I had in my pocket. One of them was The Legend of Zelda, uh, Four Swords Adventures for the GameCube. I've always wanted this specific version of it. What the hell are you talking about, computer? Eat my ass. My computer's acting funny. My Mac, not like not my laptop. Um, 
I have, a friend of mine had this back in the day, and we were going to play it uh, one time. It was going to be four of us. It was going to be me, my friend Justin, his wife Elizabeth, and my friend Charlie, the one who streamed uh, Super Smash or Super Smash TV with me. Uh, the only thing was Charlie never showed up. Something happened. He couldn't make it. So we ended up playing three-player. And the game comes with the uh, this plug that lets you hook it up to a Game Boy Advance. And I guess that was the way that everyone had to play it. That wasn't the main, the first player. Uh, so the fourth player, which was the purple link, was the uh, one that was computer controlled for the game. Click on YouTube here. Uh, so because it was computer controlled, it kept doing stupid stuff. It would like jump off cliffs and run into the bad guys head on and not really do the attack like it's supposed to. So we just started calling them perp. <laughs> We're like, oh, God damn it, perp again? You're like, what the hell? So when I would see Charlie for about a year after that, and I would keep on calling him. There's the chat. Remember Kenna Cat? <coughs> Woo! Um, so yeah, for about a year after that, I would call him perp every time I would see him. And he just like, what the hell are you even talking about? And I, I didn't tell him until maybe a couple years ago what it meant. Uh, but yeah, it's a, uh, it looks like, uh, what's it called? A link to the past, the game, but it's a four player multiplayer game. And like you have to do environmental puzzles that involve like your four links doing things together. Like four takes four of you to push a block out of the way and stuff like that. It's really, really cool. I liked it a lot back then. I really wanted to get this one back in the collection in this form, which I did. Also picked up another Mortal Kombat game, and that's Mortal Kombat Mythology Sub Zero. I have this for the PlayStation, and I I enjoy it for the storyline. The controls are kind of poopy. Uh, his phone dies just in time for Cap's arrival. I know, isn't that the way it always happens? I could have spent more. A lot of boots took cards. I talked about that already. Cap, don't rub it in. <coughs> uh, so. I uh, want to get all the Mortal Kombat things, so when I saw this sitting there, I was like, yeah, I'll probably fuck at that, because why not? Um, I played it when I was capturing footage, and I was not enjoying myself a whole lot. I, I hate that Nintendo 64 controller. I just, I do. Playing it is even more of a pain in the butt with that controller than it is on the PlayStation. And on top of that, you don't get the awesome cutscenes that are in the PlayStation version, because this is on a cartridge, so everything is like little pictures, and really low-res pictures at that. And the music sounds like you're listening to it through like a, a paint can, and it's just really tinny, and yeah, I'm not having fun. So, but I got it. So another Mortal Kombat game I can cross off the list. And the last one is another Saturn game. And the funny thing is, last year I picked up the first game in this series at the convention, so it made sense that I would get the second one this year. And that's Street Fighter Alpha Two. Um, I was capturing footage of this, and I ended up playing this for so long. It's probably my favorite game in the Alpha series. Uh, I was having a blast playing this. All the characters are fantastic. Each one I played, I was having a blast playing as. <laughs> Always want to try MK Sub Zero. Get it for the PlayStation. You will thank me later. Cap, you masochist. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think this is where they first introduced Akuma. I can't. I might be wrong. I don't remember. The timeline for these games is really screwy because these are like the Alpha Zero games in Japan. Um, super great game. I had a blast playing it. So the thing was. These three games equaled up to the exact amount of money I thought I had in my pocket. Turns out, I had totally forgot that I had spent 20 bucks to get the autograph from Anthony Marquez for my Mortal Kombat 2. <laughs> Which sucked. So I'm like, oh, here's the money you're asking for. And he goes, oh, you're $20 short. I was like, oh, um, would you take that amount for these games? And he goes, no. He goes, i do 10 more. And I was like, well, I don't have 10 more. What you have in your hand is all I have left in my pocket. So it's either that or nothing. And he goes, Fine. I was like, gotcha, sucker. So, yes, I can make the deals too, man. I pulled that hole, but I only have this much money in my pocket, sir. Can I please have one? It works. <coughs> uh, I hope you're not talking about me, Cabot. I never liked Superman 64. That game is dookie. Dookie! And then as I'm walking out of the convention, I was like, okay, I just spent all the money I have on me, you know. Get the hell out of here before I decide to go to a cash station and spend some more. And I wanted to start getting... I wanted to leave anyway because I wanted to beat the, the storm. The storm was getting pretty bad outside. So as I'm walking out, I see Benjamin Wadley, who uh, runs the Midwest Retro Gaming Society Facebook group that I'm in. Uh, last year, he had a meetup at the convention, and uh, he had like prizes that he was raffling off and stuff like that. This year, he had made a bunch of posters, a, a limited amount that he was going to give out to members of the Facebook group. <clears throat> I was going to say, you better be talking about Cap... Can it? <laughs> they better not say that shit about me. I'll, I'll punch a bitch. <coughs> um, 
and I kept running into him, and he would never have the posters on him. Like over, but I saw him on Friday, I saw him on Saturday, and I would always be like, "Yeah, you got the posters? No, they're not with me right now." So as I'm leaving, I walk past this room. I totally forgot that he had set up in there. It was a that was the Nintendo Age room or something like that, or Atari Age room or something. And as I'm walking out, I just happen to glance to my right, and I see him walking out the door, and I go, "Hey, Ben, can I get that poster?" And he goes, "Oh yeah." So we got a picture with him and everything. So I got this rad. Midwest Gaming Classic 2019 attendee poster that he had made up just for members of the of the uh, the Facebook group, which is pretty awesome. I'm glad that I got this. I'm definitely framing this up and putting it up in my game room, which is fantastic. <clears throat> and I also kept the placard that they put on our table at the convention for the uh, Midwest YouTube gamers. Only thing is, I can be dumb sometimes, and I should have had everyone on the panel sign it. That didn't happen. But whatevs. It is a sweet poster. I was glad that I ran into him on the way out. Otherwise, I would have totally forgotten about it. So, left for the day. Almost got into a car accident on the way home. Uh, it was raining so bad, and it was like raining slush. So, as I'm driving, I go under an overpass, and I guess a semi had driven over uh, above me on the overpass, and slush went shooting over the sides of the overpass, and it landed like all on my car. And I was in the leftmost lane. And when it landed on my windshield, it took me maybe 30 seconds to clear all that off my windshield. And by the time I could see anything again, I was maybe this far away from the, the uh, barrier that goes into the oncoming traffic lane. So that could have ended badly. <laughs> but it was okay. I got home fine. Uh, and that was the end of the Midwest Gaming Classic for, for me. So thank you for sticking through this long-ass live stream. Uh, it, like I said, it, this is the fourth attempt to do this <laughs> film the video like within a week of the convention ending didn't like it tried to stream it last week didn't happen my mac was like hell no uh filmed it again that night realized i hate editing these types of videos together now <laughs> so i said live stream the shit out of it now that you got a working or a way to make it work and thankfully thankfully it did so thank you very much no problem, we're no problem, Captain Algebra. You got you got you got a life. Everyone has a life. I don't blame for people for not showing up or being late or whatever. You show up if you can, and if you can't, I don't hold it against nobody. <clears throat> Unless you're Jason, my enabler brother. Some of my bitch. Aw, thank you, Cabot. <laughs> You're so sweet. Um, so now that I have this out of the way, I can finally move on to things I want to do. Okay, so Jason of Corpse Flood Gaming and I are actually talking about doing dueling uh, Top 3 Tuesday videos. So he's going to come up, I'm going to come up with a topic one week, and we're going to both release them on the same day, and then he's going to come up with a topic, probably, and we're going to just go back and forth like that until we run out of ideas. And we encourage everybody to make response videos, except for a certain somebody that I know. <laughs> you know who you are. Um, I also have that Retron 77 review that I'm working on. <clears throat> Gives Cabot a Cheeto. Uh, the Retron 77 review, those uh, uh, Diamonds in the Rough videos that I'm working on. I got one for the Genesis I'm working on and one for the Nintendo. I also have a video I'm working on. I don't want to talk about the topic because I want to keep it a secret for now. But it is, well, it's not really movie themed. It has movie games. Movie games are going to be talked about in it, but it's not specifically about movie games. But there's a really cool, like, top ten list that I got coming out. And I also have another uh, movies that would have made great video games uh, collaboration coming out. Who do I have in this one? So it's part four in the series. And this one I have <clears throat> Do You Nerd, Gaming Off the Grid, Saru Maru, uh, Linda the Gamer Girl, um, Hungry Garaya. I think I have the list here somewhere. <laughs> Oh, Chris, you're stupid sometimes. I have the list of movies that they've talked about. <laughs> I don't know if I have the actual names of the people. Uh, Nefarious Wes. Uh, actually, uh, Max Impact, uh, Ice Pirate, and a couple others. Uh, but it's fantastic. It's going to be the best one yet, I think. Uh, everyone's picks have been fantastic and out there and weird and interesting, and I love it. So... Got some stuff to look forward to on the channel. Uh, if you need me to do a collaboration with you, just throw me a line. I actually got some new uh, theme music today from Patrick Bateman. So you're going to hear the new theme music in the next video that I release. At least the next edited video that I release. Yeah, there's that too, Captain Algebra. You, that, that's fair. That's fair. <coughs> um, 
So thanks for sticking around and watching this long ass uh, live stream with me. Uh, I'm glad that everyone showed up. I'm glad that we were chatting while we we're doing it. I'm sorry about my throat. I'm still having problems. Uh, so thank you for sticking around. And I am Chris, the old ass retro gamer, signing off. And I don't have throat cancer. <laughs>